Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today we're going to take a look at the 22nd in my series of the Spiel des Jahres, or German Game of the Year award winners. And this is a, an award given out to by the German gaming press to the board game that they feel best extends the hobby and brings new players into the hobby each year. So today we're going to look at the first game ever to win the award back in 1979, and that is David Parlett's Hare and Tortoise. And this is a simple race game in which players are going to be manipulating a number of hares along a racetrack and they'll have carrot cards which function almost as a sort of commodity um, that will allow them to move in leaps and bounds across the racetrack so in a sense it's a hand management game but it's one where you definitely have to pay attention to what other players are doing because your costs and your opportunities are always going to be changing let me take a minute to show you how the game plays and then i'll come back and give you my thoughts on it here we have the setup for a game of Hare and Tortoise, and you can see that the game's board is essentially just a one-way racetrack. And then in the center of the table, there are going to be um, a number of these carrot cards, which are essentially a currency that players will be using to move. And each player will begin with a certain number of these carrots, depending on players. In a four-player game, which we're playing here, each player would get 95 carrots. So every player will also have a token to represent them, and that will start at this start line. And the idea is to be the first to get to the finish line. Each player will also be given three of these lettuce cards or cabbage cards that they'll have to use before the end of the, uh, the game. They'll have to stop these spaces with the cabbage on them to eat those. And then they'll also each get one of these dual-sided reference cards, at least in this version. Um, on one side, it shows you your movement costs. And you can see here that there's essentially... Um, a cost of one carrot to move one space, then your second space costs two, your third space costs three, and so on. So as you increasingly move more spaces, your costs go up substantially. Then on the uh, reverse side, and some ga versions of this game do come with cards, but in my version, there's essentially a dice chart where if ever you land on these rabbit spaces, you'll immediately roll a die, look at your position in the race, and then execute the action shown on this space. So each player will get a reference sheet with those things. So the way that this game is going to work is that players are just going to be racing around the track. So on a player's turn, they have a very simple choice, and that's simply to move forward any number of spaces, provided that they have the carrots to pay for it, or to move backward. And whenever you move backward, you would just move to the um, next unoccupied turtle space. No two rabbit tokens could ever be on the same space. So if it was this player's spit turn, let's say it's the uh, white player's turn, they might choose to move forward to this space here, and you can see that that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. And to move seven spaces on their chart, you could see cost 28 carats. Um, so they would just you know pay that in to the bank and take change. And then they would execute that movement, and then that, that would be the end of their turn. So then it would be the next player's turn, and then they would have to figure out where they want to move. Let's say they want to move onto this space here, so they might move six spaces, and then they would pay 21 carats into the supply. And then, because this is a rabbit space, they would immediately roll the die, and they are in second place currently. So you could see they would go one carat space backwards, which in this case is just one space backwards. And this is how the game is going to keep going, with players essentially moving forward or moving backwards, spending carrots or collecting carrots, and uh, jockeying for position. The first player to cross the finish line will win. However, to cross the finish line in first place, you're going to need 10 or fewer carrots. The game does allow you to keep playing after first place is awarded, and then to cross the finish line with um, second place, you need 20 or fewer carrots, third place, 30 or fewer carrots, and so on. But um, over the course of the game, you're going to have to sometimes move backward to win the race, so or to stay in the race. So let me explain what these various special spaces do, and I'll zoom in to do that. So you can see here on the board, there are several types of spaces. So as I've explained already, the um, the rabbit spaces simply make you ro roll the die, and usually the further along you are in uh, position, the higher you are in position, the um, worse your odds are. You, if you're in last place, you'll generally get a good thing. The second type of space are these carrot spaces. And what you do with those is you look at your 
is when you land on them, nothing happens. But then on your next turn, you'll look at your relative position. So let's say this was a situation. The blue player would be in third space. They take that number, so three, and multiply it by 10 and take that many carrot cards. So they would get 30 carrot cards to add to their hand. Then they could choose to either stay there for another turn to collect more carrots, or they could then move and take a normal turn. So that's one way for players to collect carrots. There are these numbered spaces here that have either a one, five, six, or a two, three, four. And if you're on that position, you'll just wait till your next turn. And then let's say that this player was here. If your position matches the number on the space, you'll take 10 times that number of carrots. So if this player right now is in second place, they would get two times 10 or 20 carrots into their hand. So those only pay out if you correctly predict your position for the next round. Then the uh, next type of spaces are here, this lettuce space. So like I said at the start of the game, each player is going to get three of these lettuce cards. When, you're on, when you move to a lettuce space, you simply flip your tile over. Your next turn, what you'll do is you'll flip your tile back. You'll look at your relative position. So this player is in first pla place. You'll take 10 times that many number of carrot cards, so 10 in this case. And then you will discard one of these cabbage cards out of the uh, game. And you cannot finish the race if you have any cabbage cards left. So you'll have to make pit stops at these various cabbage spaces on the board. Then finally, let's just move over here and make sure I have that in focus. So here you can see that there are these turtle spaces and you can never move directly onto one of those. All that you could do is choose to move back to the one of those. So for example, if this red player was running low on carrots or if they just wanted to block that turtle space, they would move backwards to it. So one, two, three spaces, that would be their entire turn. And then they would take 10 times the number of spaces that they moved in carrot cards or so 10 times three or 30 carrot cards. So those are simple, the, the um, the ways that you're going to be manipulating the board and essentially the game becomes a bit of a math puzzle is just trying to figure out your optimal moves trying to figure out when you should make big moves to try and surge ahead and when you should play conservatively and make small moves so again the first player to cross the finish line with the required number of carrots will be the winner all right so that is hare and tortoise and this is a very unique race game it's one that is definitely a little mathy and some people don't like that aspect of it but i think that's one that's also very unique and holds up very well it's still very enjoyable to play especially i think if you're playing with four or five or six players it's fine with lower, lower player counts i just think that the more people that are interacting um during the game the better it is because uh, if there weren't any other players on the board, you could just figure out an optimal number of moves to get to the end, and that's not very exciting. Because you cannot land on the same space as another player, and because your relative position is always changing, and the game puts a lot of emphasis on what your relative position is, always you always have to be managing your carrot supply, always looking at how you could prevent other players from taking carrots, or make them take carrots based on where they are and what the uh, position of the space they are. Uh, will do to them um, and also the game has this one you know random element which is the die roll and I know that some versions of the game also have cards and that random element just makes the game l a little less of a computational exercise and more of a interactive experience so I think the game is very well designed it's you know the very first game to win the Spiel des Jahres but it still holds up very well over all these years there's still nothing that has come out that I think is quite like it um, and that's a testament to its design it's not you know the race game where you're going to you know roll two sixes and move you know scream ahead into the front of the pack and it's more cerebral than most race games but I still think it, it's something that players will remain engaged in will have fun with and you know there's some sense of you know misfortune even though it's generally at the hands of other players instead of at the hands of luck in most cases in this game so I think that the game you know holds up well it's I think incredible that you know the first Spiel des Jahres is such a strong game it's you know not the best game ever to win the award but certainly not the worst it needs to make no apologies for itself and it's one that i think every gamer should try at least once if nothing else for historical um reasons so i guess i'll leave it at that you know and say that that is hair and tortoise thanks for watching